Welcome back. I am Amanda with Healthy House on the block and I'm here with our weekly video and tip on creating an indoor space that truly supports your health and your wellness through removing toxins from your home and creating a space that is healthy. This week we're going to do a toxin deep dive. So every now and then I really love diving into a particular toxin because I really think that it is easier for us to remove a particular toxin from our home when we fully understand it, when we understand what the health implications are of being exposed to this toxin, when we understand where this toxin is in our home and perhaps in how many places we have it within our homes. And finally, I like to give healthy swaps on what you could do to replace certain products, certain materials, certain items within your home with that toxin. And this week, the deep dive is PVC toxins. So polyvinyl chloride is all over our homes. It has been used for years and years and years. It is in a multitude of items within our home that we bring inside or that we just currently have within our home. Now, the biggest thing to understand about PVC toxins is this is an endocrine disruptor. And so we are going to deep dive into what that means for your body and your health. It is also a toxin that is very harmful to kids because of the fact that children are exposed to this toxin over and over and over again, even more so than adults. So let's dive in and find out how you can get PVC toxins out of your own home. You've probably heard plenty of snippets here and there about polyvinyl chloride and PVC toxins when it comes to products and materials around your house because PVC is a widely used type of plumbing pipe in homes and PVC is actually used in multiple other areas and products around your home. But a lot of us don't even know what PVC is, and if we don't know what it is, then really what's the problem with it? So for a long time, I... For a long time, I knew that it was harmful, but I had never stopped to do research as to why it was so harmful. I knew there were toxins in polyvinyl chloride and PVC, but I didn't really know what they were. And maybe that's where you're at too. So it can be easy to just assume something's harmful to our health or even know that it's harmful to our health. But to know why is going to give you the understanding you need to remove it and make positive changes and stick with those changes within your home. So this is exactly why I started sharing my deep dive posts into toxins like PVC. I think it's really helpful to not only understand what makes these materials toxic, but also how they're affecting our families and our bodies at the same time. So to start off, let's look at what PVC toxins are. PVC toxins or polyvinyl chloride is a type of plastic. Commonly known as vinyl, it is the most widely used plastic in our society. Chlorine is one of the biggest components within PVC that makes it a toxic material. PVC toxins such as chlorine not only have huge environmental effects, but they also have a wide array of health effects, which I'll mention later on in this video. Another one of the main PVC toxins is dioxin. Dioxin is actually unintentionally created whenever a chlorine-based chemical is produced, used, or burned. So there is evidence that dioxin is actually in the polyvinyl chloride material and they have found that it actually never leaves the product. So phthalates are also added to many types of polyvinyl chloride as another PVC toxin. We can just kind of add to our list. Phthalates, which I have done a deep dive on before, are linked to abnormal reproductive development, neurological toxicity, as well as hormone disruption. So all really big things that impact our body. And because plastic and vinyl are such complex materials with a variety of different additives, it's even possible to get a polyvinyl chloride product that contains lead or cadmium in it, which 
as we know, are poisonous, especially in children, as these toxins just accumulate within their systems. So we come into contact with PVC toxins in three different ways, and this is true of most environmental toxins that are present in our home and in our world. So first and the most harmful way is through ingestion. This would be swallowing food or water that is contaminated with PVC, maybe wrapped in PVC packaging or stored in PVC containers. The second most harmful way is through inhalation. PVC on various products throughout the home can end up producing fine amounts of dust that end up on our surfaces and in our HVAC system. So once the dust is airborne, it easily enters our lungs through inhalation. And then the final way you come in contact with polyvinyl chloride is through touching products that are made with PVC. This is especially true of children's toys and products that are often plastic or vinyl, including your flooring. So exposure to PVC toxins and polyvinyl chloride means that there's also exposure to phthalates. If you were around for my blog post about a month ago, I covered phthalates in a deep dive blog post. I shared all kinds of studies linking phthalates to abnormal reproductive development and neurological toxicity in both kids and adults. And I also shared the harmful effects when it comes to prenatal exposure and the endocrine system. So there was a long-term study that I found on childhood obesity that made the direct link between the additives in polyvinyl chloride chloride products that kids were in contact with and the negative health effects they have on children. And this is specifically for ages 4 to 11. So because these PVC toxins are endocrine disruptors or they alter that natural hormone production, they also play a role in childhood obesity. PVC toxins also contain synthetic estrogen, and this is another hormone-disrupting agent that plays a huge role in not only just the general disruption of the entire endocrine system, but it's also been linked to cancer. So what I think is really important to cover is who's at the highest risk for all of these health impacts, and it's kids. When we're talking about kids and babies, exposure to PVC toxins begins in the womb through the mother's exposure to polyvinyl chloride products. Babies will then ingest chemicals through breast milk and other items that have had contact with PVC toxins in their environment. And because an infant and a fetus are rapidly developing and young children are more susceptible to PVC toxins in terms of brain development and function, it poses a problem. Kids also pose a higher risk due to the fact that per pound, kids take in more air and food than an adult. This means the toxin concentrations are so much higher in kids than compared to adults. Kids also have really poor hand-to-mouth habits that expose them to more chemicals in general, including these PVC toxins that we're talking about. And then they spend so much more time playing on the floor and the ground and touching various objects, mouthing toys and other materials, and this leads to the direct ingestion of these chemicals. So I'm going to share with you a list that contains P- of items that contain PVC toxins in your home. And while PVC has been banned from a lot of children's toys and products, there are still plenty of sources within our home that PVC toxins exist in full force. And this list is just scratching the surface. So when you're trying to remove plastic from your home, it can be a really big undertaking. Not to mention it's probably not something you can do all at once or afford to do all at once. So instead, take the approach to replacing just one thing at a time. You can look at that list that I just shared, and I bet you're starting to think of your own house and the places that polyvinyl chloride products are hiding. So each time... Maybe you are going to purchase a new set of, like, say, snack bags. Buy a set of reusable silicone ones instead, especially 
when you use these bags a lot. Eventually, you'll slowly be replacing each of these items in your home. Things like flooring or windows or water piping may be something that doesn't get changed out for quite a while down the road, but just know that by changing these other things, you're going to be improving your toxin load. You can also be on the lookout for items that have the recycle labels on them, indicating it has PVC toxins in them. A PVC or a V at the bottom of a container indicates that the item can contain polyvinyl chloride. So I also am sharing in this week's blog post a list of my favorite swaps for those areas that are obviously PVC toxic. I have it broken down into home products, kids products, and kitchen products. You can head to the blog post and take a peek at those. I'm also sharing some other posts that I did that cover flooring options, carpet options, and window options that do not contain PVC. So what if you were to change just a few things from the list that I shared in your home? Could you imagine the benefit of unburdening your home and your body with just these really simple swaps? Changing your home to be less toxic is totally doable. It's simply making small changes that add up to a huge impact to make a difference in your home. Thank you so much for being here. If you found this video helpful at all, feel free to give it a thumbs up and a like. I also hope that you will subscribe to my channel because I am here every single week with new information, new ideas, new tips on reducing toxins in your home and creating an indoor space that truly supports your health and your wellness.